What's up everyone, this is Tyson at Titans of CNC. Today I'm going to walk you through how to hand program on a lathe. Before we get started, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our channel. We've got plenty more videos coming. Like this video and feel free to leave comments. We'll get to you if you have any questions. So on our YouTube channel, my dad has a really good video on how to program on a mill. If you haven't seen it already, check it out. Following his video, I thought it'd be a good idea to show you guys how to hand program on a lathe. We'll do a simple face and turning cycle. It's a really basic cycle, but I'll walk you through step by step. I'm actually running a job on this machine. It's out of a plastic called Peak. I don't want to break this machine down, so we're just going to program right in here. I'm going to make sure that it doesn't get in the way of the job. The speeds and feeds for this material, you can use on plastics or aluminum, whichever one you want. Let's get started. I'm going to walk you through this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a fresh program. We're going to go to Edit, F1 to bring up the menu. I'm going to push right until I get to the program menu, and we're going to hit Create New Program. It's asking me right now to enter the program O code. If you've seen my dad's video, you know that we have to give our program a five digit number after the O code. So I'm just gonna give it a little generic one, two, three, four, five. So O, one, two, three, four, five, and then we're gonna hit enter. I got my new program made. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually name my program, give it something so that it shows up on this list here. Anything that isn't a G or an M code, you have to put in parentheses so it doesn't get mixed in with the actual program. So I'm going to hit parentheses and I'm just going to type in the name of my program. So we just do face and turn into parentheses and then I'm going to hit insert, adds that in. I'm going to get my cursor to the end of the uh, block here. I'm going to hit the end of block button a few times, hit insert. Gives me some space so everything's not bunched up together. So usually at the top of my program, I like to leave some comments for whoever's running this machine. I'll put stuff like the company name. I'll put those all in parentheses. I'll put things like what company this job is for. For the next line, I like to type in setup information, things that the operator of the program can reference at the top of the program. So I'm gonna type in my material size. We're gonna go 1.375 peak. That's the name of the material I'm running. It's a type of plastic. End of parentheses, end of block. And then I'm gonna hit insert, and there we go. I also like to put my initials here, along with the date. And that way, whoever's running this machine knows who programmed it or if it's been edited. If someone's edited my program, they put their initials there and they put an updated date. And that way there's no question that we're running the most recent program. Once I've got all my info there, I'll give the program a couple of end blocks here and give myself some more space. And then we're gonna start the actual program from this point. So we're gonna start off with a basic program. It's just gonna face down the front of the part and it's just gonna do one pass across the OD. Doesn't seem like it's a whole lot, but it's a basic program. You can of course add on to it and make more passes. But I'm just gonna show you one face pass, one turn pass, and just the little things at the beginning and the end of the program you need, and you can get started hand programming. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it an end number here with the number of my tool. All this end number is is a marker so that when I need to find a certain tool in the program, I just search for it. N1 brings me to tool one, N2 will bring me to tool two. And that way I'm not spending a lot of time trying to find a certain tool. So N1, and then in parentheses right after the N, I'm gonna give it my tool name. So this tool, I'm gonna go 0156 radius, OD rougher, in parentheses, and I'm gonna put an N block here. We're gonna insert that. So you can see I put an index number here. That just tells the operator what tool number this is. It's not actually part of the program. And then I have a tool label there so you can easily find your first tool and what it does. Next thing we're gonna do our first tool, T101, tool one, offset one. I'm gonna put an end of line block. We're gonna hit insert. This is gonna tell the machine to index to tool one and use the first offset on that tool. 
Now we're gonna do our first G-code. If you've seen my dad's video, he explains G-codes and M-codes. Usually your G-codes are all movement or offset based settings. G0 is rapid, G1 is feeding. And then usually your M-codes are all optional or machine settings. Things like turning on the coolant, bringing up the part catcher, unclamping the chuck, those will be M-codes. So I'll type in our first G-code. We're gonna go G54, end of line block, insert. Usually I use G54 for the main work offset. Usually I'll use G55 if I'm flipping around the part and using a different starting Z. And then sometimes for setups or cutting jaws, I might use G59 just because that's an offset that's way out of the way and has nothing to do with my current setup. But for all the main things, and probably for 90% of the time, you'll be using G54. The next line we're putting in, G18. This is selecting my X and Z coordinate system. I usually specify it on this machine because this is a live tooling machine. Sometimes it uses different coordinates like X and Y. So I usually tell my tools on this machine, but it might be a good idea to have on other machines. So I'm doing G18, end of line block, we'll hit insert. Now it's using X and Z. And I'll put in one more G line here, G99. And that's gonna tell the machine to use inches per revolution. Again, it's a live tooling machine. Sometimes I switch around to inches per minute. So just to make sure that this program doesn't get mixed up with any other tools or whatnot that I've got going on in here, I'll tell it, use that work offset, use these coordinates, and use inches per revolution. And now it matches up with the rest of my lathe programs. I'm gonna put the next line of code here. We're gonna go G97, S2500, and M3. So G97, that's gonna spin the spindle to whatever RPM I tell in the S number here. So it's gonna spin it at 2,500 RPM. And M3 is what direction the spindle is spinning. So M3 is clockwise, M4 would be counterclockwise. With how this machine is set up and using right-handed tools, you're gonna to be using M3 most of the time. So I'm gonna start that, hit insert, We've got our spindle spinning. I want to make our first move in the program. G0, that's your rapid move. I'm gonna bring it down to X. And I'm gonna bring it down in front of the part and a little bit above the part. So I'm gonna go 100 thousandths bigger than what the diameter of this material is. So we're gonna go X, one inch, 475. It's gonna be a rough face cut. So I'm gonna go Z, 0.005. So X, 1.475, 100 thousandths above one inch 375, which is our diameter size. And then Z, 0.005, that's gonna bring this tool five thousandths away from Z0, which would be the finished Z. Gonna add our end of block here, and we're gonna hit insert. In a normal program, I'd also add an M8 to the end of this line here and that would start my coolant. But because we're filming this and I know that this is a plastic part that can handle not having coolant, I'm gonna leave that out. I've got our tool rapid to position. So the next line I'm gonna add is a G50 and this is a spindle limit. What this line tells it is that the RPM can't go past this number that I'm gonna specify as an S number here. So I'm gonna say S 3600 and hit end of line block here. The next line of code I'm gonna add is a G96, which is surface footage per minute. When you go down to center line using SFM, your machine speeds up. So I need to set a limit there so that the machine doesn't go crazy when it's going down to the center. So that said, next line we're gonna do is G96. We're setting our machine to SFM. I'm gonna set it to 1000 SFM, and I'm gonna hit end of line block here. You might be wondering why I'm putting a G96 when I've already got a G97 earlier in my program. It's because I like to get my machine spinning at a close speed to what that G96 number would be when it's at this position. Because if I set it early in the program, it's just gonna be spinning really slow because that tool's away from center line. So I'll usually give it a close speed to what it'll be as if it was in position, set that to G97, and then when my tool's in position right before it's ready to cut, I'll give it the G96 number. And then there's a thousand SFM. It'll be nothing in plastic. It'll work fine in aluminum too. Now that we have our tool in position, spindle is spinning where we want it. 
we'll do our very first feed number. We're gonna type in G01. It's gonna be a feed command. We're gonna to go to X negative 0.031, and then I'm gonna give it a feed command, and I'm gonna type in our inches per revolution that I wanna run our feed rate at. So I'm gonna go feed rate of 12 thousandths. End of line, and we're gonna hit insert. So we got our face pass. You might be wondering why I'm not programming to X zero, because I'm going straight down. I'm actually going a little bit further to X negative 0.31 thousandths. The reason for that is because my tool, if you look at my setup here, it's got a 15 thousandths radius. If I just went to X zero, because of that radius, it wouldn't quite be on the center of the part. I actually have to go down a little bit and compensate for the radius. So a good rule is when you want to face to your center of your part, go down twice as much as what your radius is. So double that number and give it a negative version of that as your X here. And that'll take it straight to center line. So we face the center line. Now I'm gonna back the tool off 100 thou. When you have an OD that you're cutting, negative moves will always cut into the part and positive moves will back off the part. I did our face pass. I want this tool to back off the part. So now I'm gonna go in Z and I wanna back this tool off 100 thou. So I'm gonna go positive Z, 100 and 5 thousandths. End of line block, insert. So it went to Z, 5 thousandths, fed down the front of the part. Now it's feeding off of the part, 100 thou, so it's going to Z, 105. And now that it's away from the part, I'm gonna get the tool into position to turn across the OD of the part now. So I know I'm away from the part now. We're gonna go G0, a rapid move. And I'm gonna bring the X to whatever X I wanna do my first cut at. So because I'm gonna give this part a 25 thousandths radius, this starting X number is gonna be a little bit tricky. So I need to give this machine the starting position of my radius in X. If you have a radius, you have a starting point here, and then you have your actual radius arc, and then it's turning straight across the rest of the OD. So to find that starting point, you take your finished OD size for your radius. So in this case, it's gonna be 1.25, and that's the diameter that the radius ends up being after it's made. And then I'm gonna subtract it by what my radius is, plus the radius of the tool. I have a 15 thousandths and 6 tenths radius on my tool. I'm gonna to add that to the 25 thousandths radius that I wanna make. You're gonna to put together 25 thousandths and 15 and 6 tenths. That's gonna give you 0 0.0406. And then I'm gonna subtract it, so 1.25. And then because this is a diameter, we're gonna subtract it one more time. So minus 0 0.0406 equals X 1.1688. End of line block, insert. If that seems a little bit confusing, it might make more sense in the next couple lines I'm gonna add here. But just know if I add the radius that I wanna make plus the radius of my tool, if I add that two times to this number, it'll give me 1.25. So now I've got my pre-starting point for the radius. We're gonna feed into the part now in Z and match up to where we face the part. So we're gonna go G01, feed command. I'm gonna put Z, positive 0.005 and that matches up with the Z that we had earlier when we faced down for the front of the part. And I'm gonna put end of line block. I don't need to put a feed rate on this line because I have a feed rate earlier in the program. So as long as my feed rate hasn't changed, I don't need to keep telling my G1's feed rates. So I can insert my line here and we have our Z movement to the front of our part. So now we're gonna actually put the radius into the part. We're gonna put a G3 a G3 on an OD tool, that's usually gonna give you an OD radius. You use a G2 for an ID radius. We're gonna put the finish X diameter for our radius. So X 1.25. Then we're gonna put our Z move. So how far the radius is going in Z. So I'm gonna put a Z negative. So Z minus point. And then I brought this number up earlier. We're gonna see it on the next move that I'm gonna make. But I'm gonna take the radius what radius size I wanna make. So I want a 25 thousandths radius, 0 0.025, plus the corner radius of my tool, 0 0.0156. 
that gives you 0 0.0406. But then I'm gonna subtract from this number the five thousandths that I'm leaving on the part because this is a rough part. And the number I'm gonna put into my Z here is gonna be 0 0.0356. And it's a negative Z. Right after this Z, I'm also gonna give it an R. And that's gonna actually be my radius number here. And same thing. For the R, it's going to be radius plus the tool radius. So on this R, we're going to put 0 0.0406. That's our tool radius plus the radius that I want to make. So a 25 thousandths radius. End of line. Insert. So you can see that R number is the same as the Z move because it's at the front of the radius. We just added five thousandths to it because we were off the part five thousandths. And there we go, we swung a twenty-five thousandths radius on the front of the part. The very next line, we want to feed across the top of the part now. It's very important to put a G1 after your G3 because you're no longer in radius mode. Sometimes it's easy to forget to put a G1 after this radius move and it'll give you alarm saying you can't do that because you're trying to make another radius. So we're going to put a G1 and we're going to feed across the part now in Z. So we're going to go Z minus 1.1. I'm going to feed across the part an inch and 100 thousandths. End of line block. Again, we're using the same feed so we don't have to put another feed rate. Hit insert. There we go, we turned across the part. The program is pretty much done at this point. So now I want to back off the part and get my tool a safe distance away before I home it. I'm actually gonna give it the same X number that I started the program off in. I'm not gonna put a G1 because we're still feeding using the previous feed motion. I'm just gonna put an X 1.475. This is gonna feed up to one inch 475, bigger than my starting diameter away from the material. Put an end of line block and hit insert. Now that it's away from there, I'm gonna bring it a safe distance away in Z. We're gonna go G0, we're gonna rapid, Z, positive, 100 thousandths, end of line block. This is bringing my tool to the front of the part, away from all my turn surfaces. And now that I know my tool is away from my part and away from my chuck, I'm gonna start homing it out. We're gonna go G28, that's your home command, return to your machine zero. And I'm gonna go U0 point, W0 point, end of line block. So G28, we're homing the machine. U0, that's telling the machine to home the machine in X. The U corresponds with X. Same thing with W, we're homing the machine in Z, going to Z0. So this is gonna take the tool and it's gonna go all the way to the back of the machine to what my machine says when it homes out the machine. And now the very last thing, I'm gonna put an M30 at the end of the program, and that tells the machine that the program's ended and to reset the cursor and bring it to the start of the program. And there we go, we got a full program. A simple face pass, we did a little corner break at the start of the program, and we turned across the OD of the part. Let's run the program in graphics and we'll actually cut the material here. So there we go. I walked you through how to hand program. This is gonna be the first of many videos on different examples of how to hand program. So hopefully I'll be able to walk you through things like making drill passes, tapping cycles, ID passes. If there's something you wanna see programmed or wanna learn how to program, feel free to leave a comment and maybe we can make that happen. So thanks for watching and see you next time. <laughs>